Coming up, we've got the MiFi, the Evo, and the Macintosh of vacuum cleaners. It's next on the 20th episode of Before You Buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Ford, giving customers the power of choice with a full line of electric and hybrid electric vehicles. Learn more about Ford electric vehicle technologies at Ford.com slash technology. And by Stamps.com. Use Stamps.com to buy and print real U.S. postage the instant you need it, right from your desk. To get my special offer, go to Stamps.com now. Click on the radio microphone and enter Before You Buy. Hey, welcome to Before You Buy. Leo Laporte here. This is the review show on Twit where we get great products and we uh, take a look at them. We use them, we review them. And we've got some really, really exciting products here for you uh, today. We're going to kick things off with Nicole Lee, our cell phone wizard. Uh, this is actually uh, yet another HTC uh, One, isn't it? So uh, we've seen them on several carriers. This is the Sprint version. And you know how you can tell it's Sprint? First of all, they give it a crazy name, the Evo 4G. And then... It's got a kickstand. <laughs> Every phone should have a kickstand. Let's see what Nicole thinks of the HTC Evo 4G. I'm Nicole Lee from Before You Buy Into It, and I'm reviewing the HTC Evo 4G LTE this week. This is essentially Sprint's version of the HTC One X that Eileen reviewed about a couple of weeks ago. And the One X is for AT&T, while the Evo 4G LTE is for Sprint. As you can see here, the design is a little bit different. Um, the screen is still a 4.7-inch Super LCD 2 display. But aside from that, the design is remarkably different. As you can see, the One X has a nice white polycarbonate finish here, while the um, HTC Evo 4G LTE has more of an aluminum feel to it. Along, along the outer edges here is a sort of a um, brushed aluminum side here. On the back, you see a anodized aluminum lower half, as well as a red aluminum strip here. And above that, you get sort of a glossy black plastic bit right here. The reason for this red strip is that it actually pops out to act as a kickstand, like so. That way, you can just prop your phone up to watch videos and so forth. Also, the um, upper part of the phone here, you can open it up to reveal a micro SD card slot. Now, that is a huge thing. If you remember, the HTC One X does not have a micro SD card slot, whereas this does. So that's a huge benefit for Evo lovers. Now, going back to the design of the phone, on top here is the usual screen lock key. On the side here is the uh, micro USB charging port. On the side here, you get the usual um, volume rocker keys. On the back here is the 8 megapixel camera with the LED flash. And on the front here above the display is the um, smaller 1.3 megapixel camera for video calls. Now let's move on to the internals of the Evo. It's very similar to the One X. You get the um, dual core 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. You don't get the quad core version that the international one x does just because you need to make room for the lte chip on here however i still found it quite fast um, just scrolling along navigation seems pretty snappy to me there were occasions when launching it that might take a second or two longer than i would like but those occasions were rare the htc evo 4g lte also comes with a beats audio technology integrated, so that promises really good uh, bass audio, really high highs, really good melodies, and I do think um, it does accomplish that in terms of the music, and um, the good thing about that Beats audio technology is it carries on through all the music apps, not just the, um, the, the built-in music app, but also through RDO, Spotify, whatever music app you choose. And you activate this uh, Beats audio integration by just plugging in any now, the like. HTC Evo 4G LTE comes with 16 gigabytes internal memory, but like I said before, you do get the micro SD card storage that you don't get with the One X, which is a huge benefit. 
the Evo 4G LTE also ships with a 2000 milliamp battery, which is amazing. Even though you can't remove the battery, which as you might notice here, we still think it's great. Like uh, for me anyway, um, the phone lasted a whole day without needing to be charged, which is good enough for me. You do need to charge it every night just to keep it going through the day. But I think that's a pretty good uh, battery for a nice slim phone like this. A few other features here, it does have NFC support and um, the 8 megapixel camera has a bunch of different features that HTC built into this phone. There's a bunch of vignettes and you can make uh, the different Instagram type filters like vignettes and uh, sepia tones and all of that. It's all integrated into the camera app itself. The phone strips with Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich as well as the HTC's own Sense interface which I found quite pleasing and very easy to use. Now let's go into the pros and cons of the HTC Evo 4G LTE. The pros are that it's quite speedy. The dual core processor seems quite fast and reasonable. The display, as you can see, is gorgeous. A 4.7 inch Super LCD 2 technology, nice HD quality on here. The camera on here is fantastic, 8 megapixel quality. Nice um, f-stop 2.0 um, lens on there. Very nice and crisp. Really good macro quality close-up shots as well. Another great pro is that it has a kickstand and a camera shutter key that the One X does not have. In fact, the shutter key is a two-stage shutter key, so you can just stop one to focus and then stop down to take the photo. Really handy. Now for the cons of the phone. The design is not for everyone. I did find it a little bit blocky compared to the One X, depending on what you like out of the design of your phones. And I think the top part of uh, the Evo 4G LTE here, there's sort of a cheap plasticky feel and it does get very smudgy and very prone to fingerprints. Another huge con of this phone is that it's called the HTC Evo 4G LTE. Whether or not you will get the 4G LTE is another question, however. Sprint has yet to release its 4G LTE network nationwide yet. So all you get for now is just the regular old 3G EVDO speech, which is good, but it's not the 4G LTE as its name suggests. Um, Sprint has promised that it will um, release its LTE network nationwide later on this year, but even then it's going to be limited cities, limited markets. So it's going to be a, a, it's going to be up to you whether you want to get this phone to wait for the 4G LTE in the future. Now, the HTC Evo 4G LTE is $199 retail, but you can get it well, for $149.99 on Amazon. Is it a buy, try, or don't buy? I kind of say it's a try. It does have a lot of great features. The display looks great. The kickstand is awesome. The camera shutter key is great. The camera quality is awesome. But if you don't get 4G LTE, it just makes me pause a little bit longer. And I think you might want to wait a little bit more to see whether you get sprint, good sprint coverage in your neighborhood before you plug another cash for this. Try it out, see if you like it. But for me anyway, I think I would wait until you get the 4G LTE before you put down the money for this. I'm Nicole Lee, and this has been my review of the HTC Evo 4G LTE. Nicole makes an excellent point. Is there anywhere you can get uh, LTE on the Sprint Network? Well, they've named it. This is kind of proactive naming. For the, it's still a nice phone, but, I mean, come on, LTE Sprint. That's, that's called aspirational naming. We're going to take a break and come back in just a little bit. Uh, our next review will uh, feature, let's see here, I've got it on my, uh, on my clipboard. Oh, the old red hem himself, Chad Johnson, is going to join us with uh, a new, very inexpensive phone. Before we do that, though, I want to save you money and time on postage. Why go to the post office when you have everything you need right here on your hot little desk to do everything you would ever do at the post office. I mean, you never have to get up from your desk. Well, you have to get up from your desk, but you don't have to go to the post office anyway ever again with stamps.com. You knew where I was at with this, didn't you? Stamps.com lets you take your own printer, Mac or PC, by the way. Macs work with a website PC. They have some downloadable software. And your own printer, you don't need any special ink. You don't need a postage meter. And you can print official U.S. postage right there. You get a great USB scale free. I'll tell you how to get that free in just a second. So you plug it into the computer. You throw your letter, your package onto the scale. And you print exactly the right postage with your company name if you want, your logo. It really looks pro. And if you're an Amazon seller or an eBay seller, you absolutely have to get stamps.com. 
have to because it automatically interfaces with the software on Amazon or eBay and prints the forms out you need. does everything for you kind of automatically. You push a button, you sit back, you relax, and you click the do. It's a really great system. Oh, and no, you don't have to go to the post office a package, even with the big packages that normally you would because the mail carrier comes to you, picks it up, and takes it to the post office. So I'm, I'm not kidding. You will not have to wait in line at the post office again. I want you to try our very special no-risk trial offer at Stamps.com right now. If you go to Stamps.com, you see that $80 offer. You wait, don't click that link. There's a In the upper right-hand corner, there's that microphone there. See that? That pretty little old-fashioned 50s microphone. Click that, and then you want to enter the words or the letters B. But I'm sorry, before you buy, the, spell it out, before you buy, all one word. The, the, that offer, that $80 offer, turns into that, $110 value, because you get $55 of free postage. You get the digital scale. You only pay shipping and handling. You get the $5 support, supply kit, and you get the four-week trial. And you got nothing to lose. There's no risk. So, folks, please, go to Stamps.com. Click the radio microphone. Use the offer code before you buy and try stamps.com. We use it here. We actually think we have two accounts now because we use it so much. We love it. Stamps.com. All right. Come here, redhead. Chad Johnson, who is, by the way, has just been promoted. And I want to congratulate you. Uh, uh, what, as, as some of you know, we talked about it last week. Eileen Rivera uh, has uh, moved on to uh, work for CBS, Big Shot, and Molly Wood. Um, but, Chad, I, I thought it would be nice. We thought about hiring from the outside but what now nice to promote from within and thanks we just love chad so much we stole him from brian brushwood that's how good he is <laughs> and uh <laughs> and uh, so we're really pleased to have you here and he'll be producing this week in tech this week in google uh mac break weekly and then you do a lot of other things yeah including review phones now i keep giving you phones yeah and i keep burning through them <laughs> this is a new one now the, the advantage of this lg optimus is it's it's inexpensive right it's inexpensive so the uh, this is the lg optimus elite and um, the big thing that they're touting oh, with this it. phone, go ahead, thanks, yeah. um, is uh, that it is very eco-friendly. So all the plastic is fifty uh, percent recyclable, oh, and the other recycled. Yeah, yeah, so it's fifty percent recycled plastic. Yeah. Um, it's built without any halogens or uh, PVC or uh, phthalates or mercury. So uh. um, it's supposed to be very environmentally conscious. Well, and I'll be darned. on top of that, the charger actually is more efficient. Where it'll completely shut off once the uh, phone is done charging. So uh, it actually, you know, you can't really tell on TV. In fact, it seems a little bright right now. But it's actually a decent screen. It's small though, isn't it? Yeah. So so the screen is is three point five inches and it's awfully bright. And yeah, yeah it's very bright. Um, but look at that. I think that's yeah. a, a gorgeous screen. It's an it's an HVGA screen. So it's only um, ah, uh, low res. Yeah. So it's only four hundred eighty pixels by three hundred twenty pixels. Okay. Um, there is a five megapixel camera on the back. Well, that's not bad. Is the yeah. camera? Is it, are the images good? Do you They're have any okay. we can see? Um, yeah. Well, let me. Let you don't me have to see. put them on there. We'll put them on the uh, screen. Let's so, look at them on the. Um, <laughs> you really don't want to keep this. Do yeah. You? <laughs> right. Right. Uh, and, and then the li that recycled plastic is very durable. That's oh, very that's nice. Um, this would be a good phone for a kid, maybe. A right. High school student. And the camera. The camera's pretty student. snappy. Um, it focuses is pretty fast, and uh, so so is taking this, pictures. This looks like gingerbread. The uh, gingerbread it is. version of Android. Yeah. It is. It is two point three uh, okay. gingerbread, and there are no hopes to upgrade because it's a only an eight hundred. Um, uh, uh, what is it, megahertz processor. You know, it's so funny. I mean, Inside. really, uh, a couple of years ago, this would have been a kind of the state-of-the-art phone, but things changed so rapidly. I think it's got a good-looking screen, although a low resolution and small physically. Um, the weight is good. The feel in the hand is good. It's uh, And it's inexpensive, right? Right. It's inexpensive. Coming in at only $30 on contract. Um, now then, there are a few downsides. By the um, way, that small screen... It's the same physical size as an iPhone. Yes. Yeah. But that means that it's In fact, it looks resolution. like an iPhone 3GS. Yeah. yeah. With this with this silver bezel, it really it looks like a 3GS. Yeah. Um, now, then some things is it only has a two gigabyte internal memory. Um, there is an SD card slot in here, but good luck trying to find it. I was so confused um, uh, when, like, you know, I heard it. Uh, you have to pry into the micro SD card slot charger 
and then ripped the whole back off. Okay, that's and normal. Was, that's normal. I, I was I was confused. I thought it was there was no removable battery in this. Yeah, that's, for, so, yeah. so for, this for is a first time user, for a Android phone, right? And then uh, the flash card, uh, the SIM card goes there, and the, where does the flash card go under the battery? No, no, no. So, so the uh, that's where the SIM card would go. Right, that's the SIM. Oh no, no, sorry, that's where the SD card would. Oh, go. that is the SD. Card. That is the SD card. Oh, and okay. then the SIM is somewhere under the under, battery. Under the okay, battery. So we won't take the battery. Out. Right. Um, this feels well made, though. I have to say, it's not- yeah. And the battery life is normal. Uh, you know, n- nothing to say there. Um, with the software, it does come with an awful lot of bloatware, mostly from Sprint. Comes yeah. with NASCAR Sprint ID, Sprint yeah, TV like and Zone, and Telnav GPS. Right. Which all um, of which I noticed you've removed. I have not. Um, oh, it's and, just and on that, the screen. Yeah, the bloatware really worries me because there's only two gigabytes of internal storage. Oh, so that really worries me that there's already apps on on the device that I can't remove. Yeah. Um. So. So let's get the pros and cons. Right. What, what's good about this? Pros is that it's eco friendly. And it's low cost, coming in at only thirty dollars. Right. Although I have to point out that that's kind of a false economy because you still pay the same price for data and everything. absolutely. So you're really only saving absolutely. maybe a hundred, uh, hundred fifty bucks when uh, you're still going to pay the hundred bucks a month anyway. Right. Right. It's All it's. Right. I believe it's around two hundred dollars off contract. So uh, oh well. Okay. Now see if you wanted to get an off contract phone, but because right. it's Sprint, it's not going to work worldwide. So you exactly. Yeah. Okay. So my cons would be that um, it is a low res screen coming yeah. in and it only yeah. H uh, VGA. Uh, it has an old operating system with no um way to upgrade or no no outlook for up- upgrading yeah. and the two gigabytes of internal storage. Yeah. Yeah. So my buy, try or don't buy. I'm gonna say don't buy. Because uh, I wish that the, if this phone was free, I'd say go ahead and get it. Um, but uh, even at thirty dollars, I feel like there's better there's better competition, and um, the eco friendliness is not enough for me to say um, that that it's a definite buy. So if if you may be the person that that is a hundred percent selling point point on this phone, but not for me. A no buy recommendation on the LG Optimus Elite. Elite. Thirty dollars from Sprint. Sounds really fancy. Two year contract. Optimus Elite. You know, if you wanted a small phone, I guess. Although Sprint also sells, I think they sell the three G, three GS. I mean, right. So for then that's probably pretty cheap. So right. All right. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Great to have you. Appreciate your review, Chad Johnson. Everybody, on uh, before you buy, we've got a couple of mini reviews next for you. Uh, Tom Merritt is here. You know, he loves to read. He's actually really uh, excited and interested in doing a. Uh, a book show of some kind. Maybe if we do it like an e-reader or an audio and e-reader book show. So he's been trying out stuff. This is a new one from uh, The Nook, the Barnes & Noble Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light. Tom, what'd you think? Hey, I'm going to look at the Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light. It's in this box right here. And it's really pretty much the Nook Simple Touch with the Glow Light. We'll tell you what difference that makes and whether it makes a difference and whether you should buy it or not. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time detailing how the Nook Simple Touch works. It works very similar to the way the Simple Touch without glow light works. Uh, you've got this drag to unlock feature. Uh, it's got a nice Barnes & Noble home screen. These configurable buttons for going back and forth. But the key, when you're in a dark room, as we magically just went to, is you hold this button for two seconds and you get the glow light. And you're able to read in the dark with an e-ink reader. Uh, which normally you're not able to do. Now, what else do you get? Not really that much. You get a quick start guide. Hey, paper! Barnes & Noble, still liking the paper, because, you know, they sell it. Also, uh, you'll get a charger, USB charger, and then a separate cable that allows you to plug in not only the USB charger to the electrical outlet, but this allows you to sync uh, books over here as well. And that's really what it comes down to. This is $139 for the glow light feature. It's $99 without it. Amazon's Kindle is $99 without a glow light feature because they don't have it, but you have to have ads. If you don't have ads, it's $139 and it doesn't have the glow light feature. So really what it comes down to is do you want that ability to read in the dark? So to sum up, the cons are the same cons as the simple touch. It's being in the Barnes and Noble universe. It's whether you like the interface. Uh, The pros are the glow light. You get a backlight in an e-ink reader. So I'm going to say try. Try to see if that glow light makes a difference for you. If it does, then you should probably buy. If not, don't buy. But overall, try. That is the Nook Simple Touch with Glow Light.
Hey, this is Colin for Twit, and we're taking a look at the Verizon Jetpack. This is a 4G LTE mobile hotspot. It's available on contract for $50 from Verizon. And the best way I would describe this is it does what it says on the package. Uh, we don't have 4G here in Petaluma. As you can see, it's on the 3G network right now. So you can see here that I was able to get about 10 megabits down consistently. And then for comparison, I did my cable modem where I got 20 megabits. So if you're in a 4G service area, the speed is nice. The device itself is extremely simple. It doesn't have any user configurable options. It does have a basic menu set up where you can see what network you're on, check your signal strength, and get your Wi-Fi hotspot name and password. You can't change those. What it comes on the device is what it's set to. Verizon promises about five hours of 4G battery life. That's pretty consistent with my findings. I've been using it on and off for a few days now and I'm in about 40% battery. It includes a micro USB power adapter you can use to charge it or you can charge it from a USB port on your computer with any micro USB cable. So, pros and cons. Pros, it's simple and it does what it says on the package. It's a 4G mobile hotspot. Cons, 4G isn't available everywhere for example, here at the Brick House. But if you're in a 4G service area and you don't want to use phone tethering to get your other devices online, then this is a buy. Thank you, Colin Weir. Colin is our streaming engineer and uh, reviewed the Verizon Jetpack, uh, MiFi, the newest MiFi, and, uh, of course, the Barnes & Noble Nook from Tom Merritt, the host of Tech News Today, every Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. A great news show. Let us know, by the way, Tom really wants to do this uh, e-reader show Maybe with Scott Johnson, maybe Andrew Maine, uh, or Scott Sigler. Actually, I think he wants to do it with an Andrew Maine. Uh, let us know. What do you think? Would that be a, Would that be a show you'd like to like to watch? You can uh, You can email uh, email us at byb at twit.tv. In fact, anytime you email us, let us know what you'd like us to review, what you think of the show. Give us some feedback. Byb at twit.tv and the full length reviews from Tom and Colin are available on our uh, YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash twit all right time to take a little bit of a break and then i'm going to come back and uh, show you something that i'm actually pretty excited about the <laughs> it's been sitting in front of me the whole show have you figured out what it is <laughs> we'll talk about it in just a second but first a word this perfect timing about electric vehicles it's an electric vacuum cleaner electric vehicles from of course ford you know some people say ford where were you you know we've we've had electric vehicles for many companies already uh, how come it took so, it took so long? And I think when you see the 2012 Ford Focus, you'll realize exactly why it took so long. Ford wanted to get it right. They were really committed, not just to a token electric car, but to electric across the line and the best state-of-the-art electric. In fact, I think you'll be very pleased when you take a drive in the 2012 Focus Electric. It is, get ready, look at it, this, this is all the bests. The most fuel-efficient five-passenger vehicle in America, the most fuel-efficient. It gets 110 MPGE, 110 miles per gallon equivalent, the best city rating in its class. It has a best-in-class driving range. This is amazing. 76 miles unheard of. That's between charges. And you won't be waiting very long for charges because it has the best-in-class 240-volt charge time. You can charge uh, the uh, Ford Focus Electric with a regular plug socket, but highly encourage you to get the 240 volt. It's very inexpensive, easy to install 240 volt charger in your garage, and then it charges in. Get this four hours. But and here's the other thing: you completely control this not only with the Sync and My Ford Touch built in to the Ford Focus Electric, but they even have smartphone apps, and they'll do things like oh, they've got this value charging by a uh, power by Microsoft. That will actually figure out when the least expensive time to charge is based on utility off-peak rates. And they'll charge then. So it saves you money in a couple of ways. This is an amazing vehicle. The Ford Focus Electric. EPA estimated 110 miles per gallon E in city. 99 highway, 105 combined. It is remarkable. Remarkable. And a beautiful vehicle to boot. This is the one I want. Except then... Ford told me, oh, but in 2013, we're going to do the Ford Fusion Energy, the plug-in hybrid. Oh, now, this is an electric. It'll run electric if you're just running around town. If you need to go farther, it's got a gas engine that kicks in. It is. It, it gets 110 MPGE on the freeway. 
No, they're making it hard to choose. And there's more to come, I can assure you. Ford.com slash technology to find out more. And, of course, you can always drive one at an EV-certified Ford dealer near you. The Ford Focus 2012. It's available now, the electric. I'm so excited. And the energy coming soon. All right, time to talk about a vacuum cleaner that sucks. And that's a good thing. You know, I really, we've all seen the ads for Dyson, right? The British inventor who uh, who had an idea. He actually was, uh, he was uh, watching, I think it was uh, feed silos. And the way that they were moving the feed through the feed silos with this cyclonic fan. And he, was, he thought of all sorts of different kinds of inventions, the things he wanted to do. And he finally came up with a vacuum cleaner, the Dyson uh, Cyclone engine. It's an electric, brushless electric motor that really has amazing suction. Now, this is pretty quiet. You can hear. This is their, they, I, I call this the stick, the DC-35 multi-floor. It's battery powered, lithium ion batteries. It has a little, nice little charger pack. You just hang it on the wall in the charger pack. Uh, it has some features I really, really like. First of all, it's very modular. Uh, all of the Dyson vacuum cleaners are bagless, which means that you can empty the uh, empty them out just by opening up the port here. Oh, boy. I guess I'm going to need to use a vacuum cleaner. And thank goodness I have a vacuum handy <laughs> and dumping it out. There's very little maintenance involved. Once a month, you're going to pop off this top part here. And I probably should not do this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Here, let's let's take off the uh, the wand here, and because uh, I want to show you, you pop off this top part here, and there's a filter that you clean uh, just very rarely, very easy to get to. Um, I just I, the design on this really blows me away. Um, this filter pops out, and you can, and you literally you run it under the faucet and wash it out you don't need to replace these but once every few years uh this i've had for six months you see it's it's perfectly clean because i wash it all the time i believe in washing my filters regularly and then it snaps back in you should by the way little hint something i've learned uh you might want to let it dry before you use a vacuum again it kind of got everything wet <laughs> because this thing is a powerful motor it is a, literally it is a cyclone in there and that's what Dyson's famous for, is these amazingly powerful uh, motors. Now, I have to tell you, uh, there, there are, are some surprisingly... Um, oh, I did it the wrong way. Let me do this. Back. There we go. It all fits together. Whoops. It all fits together very nicely. <laughs> user, user error notwithstanding. There we go. Um, one thing I, uh, I, I was kind of surprised. This is, of course, a lithium-ion battery pack in here. And it does always keep charged. There are two uh, settings on this. There's regular, and if you really want some suction, you push that button, and it goes for the max. On regular, 15 minutes. On max, 6 minutes between charges. It charges pretty fast. In about an hour, it'll charge up again. Um, I think that's a bonus, because I can't vacuum for more than 6 minutes at a time. Sorry, I'm done. This is really handy for quick cleanups. It's multi-floor, works just as well on wood floors, concrete floors. I have concrete in my apartment and carpets. Does a great job. Uh, part of that is because of the carbon fiber head. This is the rotating head. It's electrified. Uh, and these carbon fiber brushes really pick up the dirt. So it takes advantage of, uh, I guess it's static electricity. This is also removable and cleanable and it's very easy to do. You just rotate this screw here and pop it right out. In fact, really everything is very nicely designed. Design is Dyson's real Design and engineering is Dyson's real uh, uh, skill. And I, I have to say, I couldn't be happier with this vacuum. See, the head rotates like that to brush the dirt in. Uh, it works very well. Does it work better than a regular vacuum? I don't know. I guess so, a little bit. Not, you know, not so much that you'd notice. It is very light, and that's one of the things I like. It's a stick vacuum that you can easily get around, be great for doing stairs, uh, of course, because it's battery powered, be great for the car. Uh, it has, it does come with attachments. It comes with a little nook and cranny attachment for your sofa and a brush attachment. Um, I, here's the negative. You ready? Three hundred twenty-nine dollars. 
It, Dyson makes the most expensive vacuum cleaners in the world. And there are plenty of Dyson clones. Everybody has kind of, and, and Dyson's not too happy about this, uh, cloned the Dyson. Um, Dyson claims it's patent infringement, and they have, in fact, gone to court and won in some cases. Um, and I want to I reward the Dyson people for making this invention. So I did want to buy the original, but, you know, the truth is you can get something pretty similar from Hoover and others for about half as much money. So the pros on this, the design is gorgeous. You won't even mind hanging this in your living room. It really looks cool. It does the job really well. It's light. It's effective, easy to use, easy to clean, modular. The no bags design is great. You know, when Dyson went to vacuum cleaner companies uh, originally, they said, what are you kidding? We make a ton of money on the bags. We're not going to do a bagless design. Go away. So he did it himself. Uh, and that's one of the reasons it's kind of miffed that they've now come around and they've started making clones. The downside, the negative, short battery life. You can only vacuum for six minutes at maximum power. For me, that's enough, but it might not be enough if you have a large house. It's really for quick spot jobs. And, of course, the big negative, the big con is the price, $329. Uh, $320. You could shop around and find some discounts, but not huge discounts. Um, now, here's the question. To buy or not to buy? I really think of this as the Macintosh of vacuum cleaners. You know, Macs costs a lot more because you pay for a gorgeous design, an elegance, a simplicity. Hey, I bought it. <laughs> I guess I have to give it a buy. I would buy it again. I love my Dyson DC-35. That's it for Before You Buy. Yes, we sometimes spend your money recklessly, heedlessly, but that's what we're here for. If you like the show, or even if you didn't like the show, please email Nicole Lee, our great producer. Uh, she's at, of course, byb at twit.tv. Let her know what you think, and let her know what you'd like to see reviewed next, because we're always getting new products in. We'll be back next week with short reviews of great products and some not-so-great products from the Twit staff. Our thanks to Chad Johnson, Colin Weir, Tom Merritt, and Nicole Lee for their reviews. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining us. And remember, you gotta watch before you buy. Good night, everyone.